taken, taken, taken. It's not happening with him. It's a matter of life and death. I'll tell you what's a matter of life and death. That beautiful lady over there. Hey, baby. Check out the gun show going on over here. Boom, boom. Firepower. Killing and making a choice. Hasta la vista, baby. That's not how the force works. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. All right, and welcome in to a new episode of Oh So Curious, where it's just three curious minds trying to tell time. Today, we're going to be talking about a bunch of different stuff. We're going to be talking about Dune. We're going to be talking about Hawkeye. There's a new trailer out for that. Dune is out in theaters, not everywhere, but some places. So we're going to talk about Dune. We're going to talk about Hawkeye. We're going to talk about the new iPhone 13, of which I woke up super early on Friday to order for myself. I had the pre-order already set up. I just had to hit <laughs> process. And it's on its way, so I'm really glad my first new iPhone in four years. And then, of course, we're going to go on to our main subject of the day, which is going to be our Tom Hanks Top 5 Movies of All Time. We each have our Top 5. We put them all together into a combined Top 5. We're going to break it all down for you. It's going to be lots of fun. But before we get to that, let me introduce who my co-hosts are. Of course, I am Daniel, as it says under my name right there, um, or under my video right there. <laughs> like It says my name there. And then with me to my, let's see, what is this? Let's, OK, to my left, <laughs> to, to, to the screen, yeah, to your left is Brian, and then to your right, is, is, Good day, is Mike. Mags. So, hey, Brian, and hey, Mags, how are you guys doing today? We're doing Great. well. <laughs> yeah, we're excited to be here. Can't wait. Can't yeah. wait to get this thing going. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All of, right, guys. Loads of things happening. It's a good show today. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. We had a bit of a false start before we got going on this, and um, that was <laughs> so falter. much fun. Um, we had to kind of like go back and forth, sort out a few things, troubleshoot issues. But now we are here, now we're up and running, so let's get the ball rolling on the show. We will start off, as always, with the quick hits. Uh, quick hits, if you haven't seen or heard the show before, it's basically each of us uh, brings a story to the table, and uh, we you know, all talk about them and react to them, and it could be something that's going on in the world right now, it could just be something that's piquing our curiosity in general, like, hey, why is water wet? That could be a quick hit. Or, <laughs> it, you know, or it could be like, hey, why did Reminiscence just bombed at the box office this past weekend? That could be a quick hit. So that just gives you an hmm. idea of, you know, what a quick hit would look like. And today's first quick hit comes to us from Magdalena, or again, I'll call her Mags. It's just, I don't want to confuse anybody who is listening to or watching this <laughs> for the first time. So Mags, tell us about Dune. You have seen this because you live in Switzerland, and so you have had the chance to go watch this movie, whereas the rest of us, a.k.a. Brian and me, have not, or Brian and I, as it would be correct <laughs> grammatically, we have not had the chance to go see it because it's <laughs> not out yet in the U.S. So, so Mags, tell us what you think about Dune. Sure. Like, both works, Max, my then it's all good. Uh, June, yeah. right. The newest sort of, like, very anticipated, very big film that everyone's been waiting for, well, almost 40 years. So mm -hmm. there was, uh, let me start with the fact that it's a film adaptation of a famous Frank um, uh, Herbert's book of the same title from 90. 65 sorry frank herbert yeah from 1965 and yeah fans got their kind of film in 1984 from david lynch however it was just not the same thing it was not very faithful that's why it was very anticipated both in a good way and in a bad way film i think everyone were a bit a little bit nervous here but the story focuses on the uh, protagonist uh, called Paul, who's uh, played by Timothy Chalamet, and he's just fantastic in it. And alongside the entire cast, by Zendaya, Scar Isaacs, we have Rebecca Ferguson, that we have even Jason Momoa. Yep, he even made a cut. 
um, it's packed. And the first half of the film focuses mainly on trying to make sure everyone gets it because it is a very complex, very different, very new story, very different type of science fiction. So it, not, it might be not for everyone. However, for any sci-fi fans out there, it's absolute must see. Um, film was packed, like the screening I went to, it was fully booked. Uh, we, there were so many seats and whenever I checked the, whenever, when I checked the bookings for the next day and the following day, it was sort of the same situation. The film is tracking really well. Uh, it got $8.4 million, mm -hmm. was that? Yep. Yes, in the first two yep. days of its released. And um, yeah, so far it's doing really, really great. Um, so 4.9 on the first day alone. And fortunately, we have to wait for the US release and HBO Max, which is meant to be on the 22nd of October. So mm -hmm, we have a yeah. little bit of time. Hopefully you guys won't get any spoilers, but it's something definitely worth seeing. Um, you know, the Denis Villeneuve, he got us Arrival, he got us Blade Runner 2049, Sicario Prisoners. It's it's super amazing. Um, you know, yeah. great score by Hans Zimmer, cinematography by Greg Freiser, who's, who I'm a big fan of because he did one of the best Star Wars films out there, Rogue One. Um, <laughs> and it's yeah. amazing. You get everything there and strongly recommend it. Awesome. Yeah, I got to say, so I, was, I put this graphic up. Let me put this back up again. This, this graphic sure. really talks about, it breaks, this is from Deadline, by the way. It's a, they, they had a Friday update, said they haven't posted a new update since. And as you mentioned, the movie's out in 17 markets, not including the U.S. Um, it, it debuted in, in, at the Venice Film Festival not too long ago, and it's, it received like a seven It's at 24 minute. now. So nice. It's 24 markets this weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's, that's awesome. It's I mean, crazy. that's a good number right there. That's decent because it's good enough to give you, give you a sense of a general audience reaction and how they're receiving it. I mean, if it received a seven-minute standing ovation at the Venice Film Festival, uh, that's right. a great thing. But, you know, film festival reception doesn't always translate to great box office because we have seen that with, like, Blade Runner 2049. You know, with great reviews, was well-liked, well-received, but then the movie really yeah. struggled at the box office. So... Uh, a movie like this, which, as you mentioned in the past, any past iteration of this, it is it is it is never truly worked out, and yeah. so the 1984 version, which again was made by was it David Finch? Am I am I quoting the right director there? David Lynch. David, David Lynch. Lynch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Different. Okay, no right. David Lynch made the 1984 version, and and then that version basically you know flop didn't flop I don't think, but it it certainly is not remembered well. So f this version of the movie it has a lot riding on it because no other adaptation of Dune in the past has done very well at the box office. So they're really relying on this movie to, to do yeah. something for, for, for the franchise that no other ver you know, adaptation has done in the past. Uh, so, so Brian, what are your thoughts about this? Uh, are you excited for this movie? Do you, are you oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. This is something that I would definitely go see in theaters or you know, obviously just stream through HBO Max. Um, as Mags had already mentioned, I'm really interested in the ensemble cast that they have. I mean, Zendaya, Jason Momoa, Josh Brolin, just to give a few. Um, and also, I don't know how you say his last name, Timothy, is it Chalamet? Chalamet. Chalamet, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Chalamet. So, uh, very excited <laughs> for that a, as well. He's a sweetheart. He's oh, like yeah. oh, everyone's favorite now. Yeah, and he's I, I mean, up and it's, coming. He's a great actor. And, as, mm -hmm. I, as I said, it's a very complex and difficult story, which has a lot of political sort of comments and suggestions there. But it's being received well, and we are thrilled to have it. Absolutely. As a representative of a sci-fi community, I can confirm. It is a great film. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, this movie, if you look at the visuals on this thing, I've, I've, the trailer is fantastic. I mean, the, the movie covers a lot of ground, you know, and or it has to cover a lot of ground. So I can't wait to see, you know, not only the cinematography, but also Hans Zimmer, like, you know, did the score. That's which, what I'm, yeah, that's what I'm, like, big I mean, into, too, like, the composition of music and film. So, yeah. I mean, that's what I, I, that's, like, the biggest, some of the biggest interest with me when, I'm, when it comes to rating and reviewing film is just, you know, the music that's involved with it. So. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, we got a bit of a preview of, of, of the movie, what the movie is all about. You know, Mags gave us a spoiler-free review. We don't want to give away too much, but uh, it's it's a good preview okay. and just <laughs> enough to just enough to you know keep our appetite uh, you know vetted and and ready to go because the movie only you know it's only a month away for for U.S. audiences and it's going to be on HBO Max. It's going to come out in theaters. It's the kind of a movie that you really do want to go see in theaters. But you know, if you can't make it out there where you're living and, and the, the, the pandemic has really taken its toll with the Delta variant and, and so on. Uh, HBO Max is there. Check it out. It's a movie Just that you have to go it. out and support. Because if you want to get a second part or more movies in this franchise, then you have to like go watch this one. You have to go support the movie. Yeah. Uh, you know, David Lynch wanted to film the second part back to back but Warner Brothers wouldn't approve it because they didn't trust that this first one was going to do well. So no, it's up to the no fans David to Lynch. approve it wrong. Danny Danny Vin knew. The new Danny knew. <laughs> My bad. I'm confused. The new guy. Um, the new David Lynch is on the side bench. For exactly. Now. Yeah, not <laughs> David Lynch. <laughs> he had a shot. The De Neville knew who's done you know Arrival and Blade Runner 2049. I'm mixing up my directors, but yeah, go support this movie. D Denis did say he wanted to film back to back. Like I said, he wanted to do the part one and part two back to back. Didn't get the chance, but he is ready to go next year for the second part if 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 they get the gets the go ahead. And Warner Brothers is only going to do that if this movie performs well at the box office. So go support it. It's, we're going to do a full review for it when it comes out in the U.S. We just wanted to give you a quick preview of you know how the movie is. And Max has gone to see it. She's got a, of course a great uh, reception. Uh, so and it was a full theater. So that's a good sign. Um, all right. So if you guys are excited about this movie, if you are going to go check it out, let us know in the comments below. If you're listening to us as a podcast. Please leave us a review. You know, tell us, uh, your, give us your feedback. Like and subscribe on YouTube. We would love to hear more from you. Are you excited about Dune? Will you watch that Dune review episode we're gonna do? Tell us more. <laughs> okay. So now let's move on. Let's move on to the next subject. And so my quick hit for today is the Hawkeye trailer that just got released late last week. It's a new show on Disney Plus. Hawkeye, of course, is one of the original Avengers from the MCU. He's been in the MCU for a good ten plus years now. But he's never had his own solo project. And unlike Black Widow, they didn't give him a movie, but they did decide to give him his own TV show. It's going to be on Disney+. Plus. It's like a limited series, much like most of those other shows that have been coming out of late. It's going to have Haley Steinfeld in it, of course. Steinfeld? Am I big, yeah, Stein, Stein yeah. Steinfeld. Steinfeld. Big fan, Steinfeld. big fan. Big fan. <laughs> um, and then, of course, it's going to have Jeremy Renner you know, back as Hawkeye, uh, Clint Barton. So that's a trailer that we have ready to go here. Let me just make sure that I've that I've got it pulled up because we had some trouble trying to play the Matrix trailer last time out. <laughs> so I want to mm. make sure we don't have the same issue again. Um, all right. Excited for the trailer. Oh, dude, I, 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 I can't tell you how excited I was to watch this. I've seen it. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Um, and we were having technical no. difficulties earlier. Not yet. So if you, did, if you didn't this see it then. This is very much the first time. <laughs> okay. It really right. is. <laughs> well... Well, I'm glad. Okay, all right. Well, let's watch the trailer. I'm gonna hit the play button and let's check it out. This is the first crypt. Oh, that did not work. See? Ugh. My technology betrays me. Give me, give me a second. Come mm -hmm. on, Daniel. The suspense is killing us. <laughs> Dude, just, just hang, hang with me for a second, all right? It's, <laughs> this is. I'm sure you we heard really it. We really don't want this to react to it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, we want to, we want to, we want this to be an authentic experience um, f for our audiences. <laughs> 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 if, you, if you're watching or listening and you're listening to all the chaos here, I'm, I'm glad you're listening or watching us. But hey, here comes the trailer, all right? So I'm going to hit play and, and hopefully it's going to work. This is the first Christmas we've had together in years. I love you guys. I'm making up for some lost time. Authorities are wondering if the masked vigilante who terrorized the city's underworld is back. The past has caught up with me. Should we be worried? No, no, it's nothing. I'll be home for Christmas. I promise. It's the When I wore this suit, I made a whole lot of enemies. You're a Hawkeye! Who the hell are you? Some people have actually called me the world's greatest archer. 
Are you one of those people? It's the most wonderful. Hey, babe, I should be back in a day or two. Hang on a second. With the kids jingle bell, Things have gotten more complicated. <laughs> You'll have to say definitely like that. Holy sh! There are arrows more dangerous than that one? Oh, it's just some Christmas. <laughs> That's pretty good. I liked it. Well, I liked it a lot. Well, that got me in the mood for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely getting me in the mood for Christmas. I love that it's a Christmas movie. And anytime you hear, like, you know, it's the most wonderful time of the year song, there's always, like, a lot of chaos going on in the background for, for either a movie or a preview for a movie. Yeah, you know so. what's weird? Yeah, anytime that song is used in a movie trailer, it's like it's it's like some people decide to become Martin Scorsese, and they're like, we're going to play this happy song while <laughs> some <laughs> well, brawl like is yeah. breaking yeah. out. Yeah. In the background, it's... yeah. But... <laughs> But look, this movie, this movie, this TV show looks fantastic already. I've seen the behind the scenes photos and I'm sure you guys have come across them too. And it's, it looks like they shot most of it in New York. Um, mm -hmm. Marvel shoots a lot in Atlanta, so they might have done that too. But I mean, all in all, this, this thing looks uh, something to look forward to. And it's going to be probably the last thing Marvel comes out, MCU based Marvel. Um, before the calendar year goes out and it's coming out in the holiday season. I forget if this is coming out in November or December. One of you guys can confirm that for me. But it is definitely November. coming out in the holiday. November. Great. But yeah, I mean... I paid attention to the date. Believe I believe it's Wednesday, it's November 24th. Yeah. Nice. Wednesday, November 24th. Well, it's not going to be coming out all at once. They're going to do one episode a week, so we will definitely still around, get around to... Around Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah around so Thanksgiving. we'll start then, and I think then it. maybe the season finale will probably be some... Or series finale, depending on if they're given an, another season, is likely going to be sometime around Christmas. Right. So you're going right. to be watching this thing the whole holiday season, which is going to be very fun, because <laughs> I think in the past... They've had The Mandalorian come out around the same time, but they've never had an MCU show come out around this time. So it's going to be a new experience for MCU fans. Um, but yeah, it sounds, it sounds great I've, to me. I find it interesting that they decide to do a series for it rather than just a standalone f movie, just like Black Widow. I mean, I think the TV series are becoming bigger and bigger. You know what I mean? It's, it's, right, and they're course. probably... Yeah, it's just... It's an interesting choice of character, essentially, to do this series for. Yeah. Well, it kind of works out, because here's the thing. Um, the budget for this is basically the same as what they would spend on a movie. It's just they, spe they spread that same amount of money out over, say, six episodes, right? Mm -hmm. So right. it's not like they're spending any less money and the production quality will be significantly less. And obviously, they have the same star power behind it. So mm -hmm. I'm looking right. forward to it. And if you've seen any yeah. of the other MCU shows so far, then clearly... The, the quality that you see on the screen, the visuals are all up to par and they're all, you know, uh, on par or up to par on par with what you see in the theaters. So, yeah, mm -hmm. this looks fantastic. We obviously are excited about this. If you guys yeah. are excited about this, let us know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. And again, I'm going to shamelessly keep asking for reviews. So do review us if you're listening to us as a podcast. We would love to get your feedback. You know, we're just starting out. Hopefully, this is something that you're enjoying. We're going to be here once a week now. Um, and so, you know, come along for the ride. And, and, you know, hopefully this is fun for you, just as much fun as it is for us. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. So let's move on now to our <coughs> next quick hit. So this next quick hit comes to us from Brian. So Brian, yep. you're going to be telling us about the iPhone 13, this yep. brand and new iPhone and all the different versions that it came, you know, is going to be coming out. It's actually already available for pre-order. So Brian, give us more information about what this iPhone 13 releases. And yeah, absolutely. Are you going to be yeah. getting one? Um, me personally, I don't think I'm going to be getting one. I was actually literally just talking to my girlfriend about it. And mm -hmm. I think I'm pretty much happy with my iPhone 11 right now. Um, it's funny that 
Apple can just kind of like hypnotize, you know, the average consumer or like the Apple like fanboy, I guess you can say, and just like get them to buy, like update their iPhone every year. Um, but basically, Apple did what it does uh, basically every year. Um, this past Tuesday, Apple introduced the new iPhone 13, the Mini, the Pro, and the Pro Max at the California streaming event. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, we'll go over some just some quick new features and improvements uh, that the iPhone includes. So looking at the uh, camera innovations on it, uh, which is pretty neat, uh, they basically improved photos and videos in low light setting um, along with their new cinematic mode. And Daniel, I think we kind of talked about this earlier before the show. So now it's got like an autofocus feature on it. Basically, if one yeah. person comes into a scene uh, with another person there, uh, the camera will now focus on that person who actually is just coming into the scene, which is pretty neat. So getting very, like, uh, filmistic now, I guess you could say, and, and more professional along those lines. Um, so basically, um, I believe it's the iPhone, and the iPhone 13, the regular one, and the mini. They both have the 6.1-inch and 5.4-inch displays that feature uh, a ceramic shield on the front. Mm -hmm. So definitely getting more durable and uh, withstanding more of, because uh, who doesn't drop their phone nowadays? Right. Um, some of the damages that the iPhone can take. Um, so basically it has an industry leading IP68 rating for water resistance, um, which is pretty neat. So it could withstand, uh, you could basically take it underwater with you if you want. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, people wow. go swimming with their phones and <laughs> yeah. then they put them in a, in a bucket of rice, but <laughs> hopefully you don't have to do that I, with this one. <laughs> right, right. Fair, yeah. I really like that they're making it more like industry orientated because so yeah. many people use their phones to record and do things not everyone can afford or has their professional equipment. So yeah. very like user uh, orientated product for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it has a more powerful processing chip as well, which is the A15 Bionic processing yeah. chip. Uh, so it's able to do a lot more, a lot faster now. Basically, as they, it seems like they update the processing chip on it every year, though, basically. Um, and the last thing I'll hit on really quick is it has a longer lasting battery life. And I'm actually not surprised about that. Um, yeah. So basically, <laughs> up to two and a half more hours in a day than iPhone 12, uh, while the iPhone 13 mini provides up to an hour and a half more in a day than the iPhone 12 mini. So it does last longer uh, battery-wise now, which is pretty neat. Um, so guys, I mean, anything else you want to just basically just touch upon with this iPhone? I'm not going to go into all the details with this because there's, there's a lot of details yeah. with it, it seems like. But um, I don't Max, know, from my personal... Yeah. Personal opinion, well, it seems like they don't really... Oh, sorry, you know, Brian. Brian's talking. No, no, no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no I was sorry, going to say, yeah, it yeah, seems like they don't really update a whole yeah. lot with the iPhone from year to year, but it seems like this year they kind of they kind of update a lot with it. So Yeah, but, it, that's, that's what I was going to say, that they really set their game up, which is really, really good. And I'm excited for the battery uh, longability, yeah. because honestly i need to change my batteries every year now every so i do tend to have like so what do i have right now i've had eight i've had for years and i'm oh, super, wow. super, super super happy <laughs> with it yeah honestly i'm so behind because i just refuse to get new things that are still perfectly functioning however this one simply because of its features it is sounding quite tempting who knows maybe early christmas present yeah, yeah. hey look this new iPhone is going to be my first new iPhone or iPhone 13 is going to be my first new iPhone in like almost four years because I have the 8 plus and you know the 8 plus mm -hmm. as good of a phone as it is it's battery like in three four years time is like degraded to the point where it only lasts five six hours and then I have to like uh, I have to yeah. recharge the thing and it, it, mm -hmm. it dies really really fast oh, so yeah to hear that this new iPhone 13 Pro I'm going to get the Pro 13 Pro Max. I've already ordered it. I got the, the, the basically the highest tier. I got the one terabyte of storage so I can get as much ProRes video into it as I possibly can. I got the Sierra Blue, which is like the signature color that they do with, they do a different signature color every year. So this year mm -hmm. is the Sierra Blue. I had the pre-order set to go on Friday morning. I woke up early, 
went to the website. It took like five minutes past 8 a.m. Eastern time for it to actually start <laughs> working. He was like, it's, it's, it's wow. standing by, standing by. I'm like, it's 8 a.m., man. You told me to show up. I'm here. It wasn't <laughs> working. And, and my brother was doing the same thing. He got in a few minutes after me. He went directly through AT&T, so the, our cell phone provider. I went through the Apple website, and I just had to hit like order because I already had everything set up to go because they mm -hmm. let you do that, um, which is really nice of them. But um, anyway, what I'm trying to say is I'm really excited for this thing because I have not even had the portrait mode feature really, or I think it was introduced by the time 8 Plus came out. I might be wrong about that. But it really you know, wasn't refined. And then now to have that capability, they basically th that portrait mode feature is what you get in cinematic video. Work That feature is working for video now, not just photos because the chip yeah. on the phone is finally powerful enough to handle being able to do what it was doing for one photo, but do it now 30 frames per second. So it's, you know, they needed a significant bump in power to, to get there. So I'm really excited for this phone. I mean, I'm also going to just mention they also announced new iPads, a new iPad, a new iPad mini, the first iPad mini update in like a few years' time. And they also mm -hmm. announced the Apple Series seven, Apple Watch Series 7. And Apple yeah. Watch Series 7 isn't really a big upgrade from the previous generation. Like, they did a lot of the feature upgrades in the Series 6, but this one adds a bigger screen, so you can have a full keyboard on there. Um, and then the iPad mini, like I said, the, you know, the first new iPad mini in a long, long time. So all in all, you know, California streaming was a uh, big event. Obviously, iPhone 13 was the big focus. I'm getting a new one. I hope you guys are getting a new one if you are <laughs> or if you are interested in getting one. Hey, Apple if you're should pay us for this promo. <coughs> they, really, yeah. they really should. We're, ta we're talking they about really the... They really should. That's a good I point, mean, Max, actually. We're open to <laughs> integrations and sponsorships and, you know, we're, we're here if you want to get in touch. But anyway. And Daniel, <laughs> and Daniel, I just wanted to hit yeah. on this real quick, too, before we move on uh, mm -hmm. the segment. So basically, if you haven't pre-ordered uh, the iPhone uh, 13 um, on September 17th, it is available for purchase on Friday, September 24th. And they come in, I believe it's five colors, uh, pink, blue, midnight, starlight, and product red. Oh, Nice. So okay. and that's the iPhone 13 and iPhone 13 mini. So. Well, I like the red color. They don't have the red product color in the Pro red. Max. And my last one was a product red, but they don't have that color in the Pro Max. So I had to get the blue one, but oh, whatever. But anyway, we got to move on. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you are watching and if you're listening and you like the iPhone 13, you are thinking about getting it, you already got it, it's in your hand or it's on the way, let us know what you think. And we would love to hear your thoughts. Of course, like and subscribe. And as I always shamelessly plug, give us a review. On, on our podcast if you're listening to us. We love your feedback. So now it's time for us to do a big, big announcement that you know we've only been we haven't been doing this thing for a long time, but we are growing. So our team is growing and as part of that growing team, we are happy to announce we have new brand new brand spanking new hosts coming. Uh, a, a, and hopefully we'll bring him in by next week's show. But uh, at any rate, we do have some excite, exciting uh, new team members. They're going to provide their opinions. They'll bring their stories to the table. Um, we have Andrew, and we also have Roland. So w what we wanted to do was give you a quick you know, peek, if you will, a sneak peek at you know, what, what these two guys are all about. So we're going to play you a little bit. Of, of, of the videos that they sent us. And these are videos that, you know, they just did as test assignments. We were like going through the hiring process and we just haven't seen to, like, them yet. <laughs> Brian has not seen them. So, Brian. and that's on him because we sent it, sent him the link. We're like, Brian, don't you want to check, check out who we brought on the team? Who we but bring in. That's that's on Brian. I, honestly, Brian, I can't. I can't. This, it's not my fault. So, <laughs> um, we're, 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 I'm going to play out the videos for you guys. We're going to take a quick look at these at, at, at first Roland, and then we're going to jump over uh, to uh, Andrew, and you know, just to give you a sneak peek at what these guys are all about. And then hopefully, we'll bring him on the show in the coming weeks, and you know, you'll get them in their in, in their full fleshed glory and if you will um, let's let's move on to roland his piece i think was called roland underground it's really funny the topic that he's talking about is ways to keep yourself busy during the pandemic so let's take a look hi welcome to roland underground where we talk about what's happening up there in the world while in my grandparents basement as the delta variant becomes more unpopular we continue this pandemic this video is to show some tips on how to live and work 
in that environment. Something very important that helps me a lot is setting timers, setting alarms. This creates a pseudo schedule that helps me keep up in time, making sure I'm on time without ever really looking at the time. You know, um, you do things like 12:15, uh, do some jumping jacks at one o'clock. Uh, do some writing for an hour at three o'clock. See whose birthday it is on IMDb. You know, just things like that. But you don't have to do this every single day. You don't have to follow this to a T, but just enough to where you get a habit of it. Hobbies. Not everything is about work. Hobbies are very important for you and your R and R. It's something that keeps you busy, but it also makes you feel productive, even though it's just something dumb and fun. This could be starting a puzzle. This could be, you know, learning guitar for a week and then giving up because it's too hard. This could be painting and you have two completed canvases that are okay. They're not as good as you wanted because it doesn't look like the picture. You don't understand how one hand is so much bigger than the other and now you have these five blank canvases and you just don't know what to do because you just wasted it but you really you just can't do this because it's just too much tedious work and it's, it's annoying. Try reading. Reading is very important. It's like watching a movie, but you have to work for it. You know what I mean? Plus, it makes you look cool. Feeling lonely? Join a cult. There's tons of them out there. You wouldn't think it, but there are. Uh, just, there's, there'll be a couple in the link below, but you know, Google and see what your needs are, what your wants, what cult would best fit you. Get one of these scratch off movie posters like I did and just spend even more money on Voodoo because you can't find a lot of these movies on Netflix or Hulu or even Prime. Can you believe that? It's not even on Prime. It's a movie from the 1920s. Something I like to do to avoid isolation is get on dating apps. You don't even have to date. It's just nice to talk to people, you know? Plus it's, it is kind of nice to talk to people actually. It's, it's, it's interesting, you get to flirt and you know, you don't have to tell your significant other about it. It's kind of like this dangerous little thing. Nothing. Call your parents, because that's always fun, right? Let me just, <laughs> let me just. <laughs> Hello, mom. <laughs> yes, the funeral is staged. How is everything? Oh yes, I have 10 minutes to spare to hear my little brother struggle with a story about him picking up a quarter. Yeah. Have I mentioned puzzles? I like puzzles. They're neat. Don't be afraid to take some breaks. Sometimes doing all this work can be stressful, you know, there's, and if you're not setting a time for yourself to stop working and to start working, you can often get confused about how long you're working and just overstressing and it can get quite crazy and hectic. Don't be afraid to take a break and think about yourself. Don't be kind to yourself, you selfish jerk. You've been lying on the couch all day, you know it. Don't you dare lie to me, there was a box of donuts on the counter and they're gone. All right, you need to treat your work like you're going to the office, okay? Wake up at 5.30 in the morning, get dressed, sit around for two hours, okay? Because that's what you do, that's what you need to do, all right? You need to have that schedule. If you don't have a schedule, then what do you have? Nothing. And that's my video for tips on how to live and work in the pandemic. Hopefully, you understand that some of this was a joke and being ironic. Or not. I don't care. You do you. Anyways, if you have any more funny suggestions or actual tips and advice, leave them in the comments. I'm interested to know, and I know people are looking for them too. Alright, have a good one, and I'll see you next time. So we are in our second year of working from home in the middle of a pandemic, and we've actually adapted pretty well to some things. We've gotten worse at some other things. So how do we work in this environment of always being in the same environment? These are a couple thoughts I had about the matter. The biggest problem people seem to be having these days is not being able to unplug. And when Netflix is one click away from that email you're supposed to be working on, it's easy to always be looking at your screen. So what I like to do, I like to split up my space a little bit. They say if you have trouble sleeping, to turn your bedroom into just a bedroom, a room for bedtime, for sleeping. And what that does is it actually psychologically primes you to think of your bedroom as a place where sleep happens. I like to take this thinking 
and apply it to changing the space for work and for relaxation. And if you're working in the same space, what you can do is you can actually shift the furniture so that your desk is facing in the work direction and your couch is facing the relaxed direction. And you can change the light, you can change the music, you can open a window, you can turn on the air conditioning, but change the modes that your house is in so that you can mentally acclimate to what you need to be doing. Do you notice there are certain times a day you're better at some things than others? Maybe you are great at answering emails at 10 to 11, and that's when you take that time to do it. Or you are really good at being creative from about 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Maybe it's not regular, but in any case, what you should do is you should listen to your instincts and say, I'm good at this around this time, and use that part of your brain for that. And then when you're done doing that, move over to a different task that uses a different part of your brain so you're not exhausted by doing the exact same thing for the next eight hours. In terms of communication, I think one of the best things that you can do is get a better microphone, get some better headphones, because if you're stuck on a Zoom call and you're struggling to understand what people are saying, or you get distracted by the echo, or you just can't hear clearly, a good microphone, some good headphones will make the difference that actually makes a Zoom call pleasant to listen to. Nothing wrong with taking a walk. I love taking walks because you get vitamin D, fresh air, you get your blood moving, a little bit of exercise, you can get things done. You can meet up with people. This is a great cure for loneliness because out there you are totally fine to be walking around and just seeing what people are doing. The world is still going on outside your apartment. Everything else that we come into contact with as media is trying to sell us something or it's trying to convince us of you know, something that has to do with right now and it affects the world or it affects how you're going to live your life. A book, it's very slow paced media. It's self paced media. And it's just about you and the author. You are just there to get some ideas. What's also nice about it is it doesn't stimulate every single one of your senses, but it requires really intense focus on one thing. How many other things throughout the day can you say that you are solely focused on one thing? If you can't unplug, if you can't stop working, you're just a machine, don't stop. You don't have to stop. If you find a way to relax, that's productive for you. So if it's working on yourself, working out, um, being creative, making art, doing that creative project you wanted to start, um, you know, starting a side hustle or figuring out you know, how could I make my immediate situation a little bit better. And if you are going to be in your home as long as you are, you might as well make it pleasant. Anyway, I'm Andrew Frankel. These are my tips for making it through the pandemic, working from home and making it pleasant. I'll see you later. All right. <laughs> what did you guys think about that? These are great. That was so good. Oh my God. Roland's, yeah, Roland's killed me. Absolutely killed me. I love, I love the two different approaches though. One was, you know, like full of sarcasm and, and it was very comedic and the other one was just very serious and very intuitive. And so, I mean, it, they were both great. I mean, I very much enjoyed the both of those. Those were awesome. Great job guys. Well done. Yeah. Look, yeah, it was I, so hard to choose from. <laughs> I'll be honest, we had a really hard time picking, like you said, Mags, we had a really, really hard time because we were going to bring in one new I person. I can see why. But I was looking, I'm like, God, this is difficult. And and then at the end, I was just like, why not? And and so I said, why not? And here they are. So we had them, you know, earlier we were having technical difficulties. They were part of the, the meeting. They had other places to go out and things to do because they weren't scheduled for the, today's record, but they were just going to hang out in the background and watch us do our thing. But they had to leave, so uh, it's, it's, I guess you know it would be nice if they were here and we could kind of like ask them for their um, for the, what they're looking forward to coming on the show. But at any way, uh, at any rate, or any way, I'm sorry, I'm tripping on more of my words. Let's move on. We're gonna have Roland and Andrew on the show in the coming weeks. I really like the whole idea of Roland Underground. 
it really I could see it spin yeah, I could see yeah. him having his own segment on the show from the yeah. I mean, that like, oh, hey, what so. what is Roland doing underground? What's Let's Roland check it out. up to? Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. go yeah. visit with Roland underground. <laughs> <laughs> or hey, can we check out what Andrew's doing in his survival bunker with that fish eye lens? I mean I would love to check that out too. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, well, if you guys are excited great. about Andrew and Roland joining the team, <clears throat> let us know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. And again, I'll keep shamelessly plugging it. Give us a review if you're listening to us on the podcast. We'd love to hear your thoughts. So now, now it's time for us to move on to the main subject <laughs> of the day. This is something, I'll be honest with you guys, this, what we are about to talk about, Tom Hanks' top five movies, is something we've been prepping for for, I don't know, like two months, it feels like. it's It's been such a long process, and I'll be honest with you, it's been a lot of fun, but I've been anxious about it. I've, I've, I've just, like, can we just do this? Can we just have this debate? Like, I have so well, many things to say, I'll keep take. forgetting. Yeah, so, all right, you know what? Let's dive into it. Enough about me talking about Tom. A lot of, top lot of switching, movies. too. Yeah, I mean, we're just talking, but... Let's debate. Let's not just talk. Let's debate. So the debate is now okay. going to start. Did you bring your box of chocolates? Because that's <laughs> life is like a box of chocolates, as our intro, you know, always tells you, and as as Forrest would tell you. So let me start off by, you know, mention, talking to you guys about my top five. Okay. So let's do it. I'm going to cue up a drum roll because I'd love to build some anticipation here. <laughs> and let's 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 do that, shall we? Let's let's build some anticipation. <laughs> Long <drum roll>. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> our first, and here it comes. Our first here it comes. Sound effect. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you wanted it. I, I brought it to uh, Brian. I brought it to the table. It's oh, here. Man. The sound effects I are rolling. Appreciate it. Here's my top five. It's on the screen. I put You've Got Mail on number five, like my one of my favorite rom-coms. It's not really a rom-com, but it's a romantic movie. Like, you know, so mm. it's, that's the genre it lives in. Um, Meg Ryan, Tom Hanks, it's one of those classics. It's not the only movie of its kind that he's done, but to me that's the most iconic one or the one that's my favorite. Then number four, Forrest Gump. I mean, you know, Life is a Box of Chocolates, Run, Forrest, Run, Jenna. Uh, it's... You know, <laughs> Gen, Gen A. Gen A. I just love it. <laughs> Gen A. <laughs> <laughs> so, I uh, love Forrest Gump. It, I just, I don't know how it slid down to number four, but it did. And I think it's because I love my my uh, my sci-fi movies, my sci-fi change flicks. So, Apollo 13 lands at number three. Ron Howard movie based on, you know, of course, real life events. Um, Ensemble cast, um, great job by the whole team. Tom Hanks led the, that the cast. We had Kevin Bacon in it, and I think was it Bill Paxton? Am I correct? The late and great Bill Paxton was in there. Yes. Yes. And yeah. then number two, of course, The Terminal, the most heartwarming. I mean, to Forrest Gump is a heartwarming movie, but t The Terminal is on a different level. And anything mm. with Tom Hanks is good. The Terminal is great, but then when you drop in Catherine Zeta Jones, I mean. Gosh, like. Well, Daniel, if I'm not mistaken, you had that as your number one at one point. I'm I, pretty sure he did. Did I? I might have, but. <laughs> Traitor. He, he's I, but <laughs> I he's no, I had to. I had to kind of like. I had to. I had to really just. Um, I had to change it last minute because I was like thinking, okay, it's a great movie, but can I really leave it in my top five? I mean, in my top, in, in the, the the first spot. Can I really leave it in in the first spot? And Saving Private Ryan, like, it's the most visceral, like, w war film you're going to ever see. And the opening sequence was just, it, it, you know, SHIT got, gets real in that movie. And, and the way <laughs> it ends, and, you know, his, his, what Tom Hanks says at the end, he's to, to Matt Damon's, uh, you know, Private Ryan, uh, he says, like, you know, earn it. Earn this. Yeah, and, earn this. I yeah. mean, that movie hits you in, 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 in so many different ways. So, so that's my, my top five, guys. Something about saving Ryan with duct tape on the run. That's, that's, that's my top five. What do you guys think? Um, I think I, it's definitely... Oh, go ahead, Max. You got it. No, I, I'm just still... <laughs> sorry, it's literally what you said. It's the fact that yeah. the... Um, yeah, the terminal is no longer on number one. It's just shocking. I must say, it's, <laughs> um, it's a tough call. 
I must admit, however, I have not seen Saving Private Ryan. That is the only oh my God. film. No wonder <laughs> it landed that low on your combined rankings. I mean, come on. You cost Saving it Private Ryan a high spot. Oh, no. No, because we, so we, so, um, we, so look, this is what, this is, they'd like I mean, to. apart from, apart from I gotta, 1917, I'm just not a person, or maybe an enemy at the gate, you know, that these okay. two war films, sure, I watched yeah. it. I'm just not a boy. Man. <laughs> like, it's a long I movie. It, it takes a while to watch. And you gotta, it's not one of those movies that you can just kind of watch and it's, and, and just walk away. It leaves you deep in thought and oh yeah it's kind of like schindler's list but it's action all the way right you mm -hmm. know so it's a I've very it, it, it. it deals with really heavy heavy emotional content um but yeah that's my top five so let's keep the ball rolling because we do want to you know bring everybody's stuff out here and then um we will you know kind of dive a little deeper and get get into why why you know some of the things some of the movies made it some of them didn't so max what about your top five do you want to give us a oh, preview? Do you want the drum roll? Let me know if you want the drum roll. I'll give you the go, drum roll. Go for the drum roll. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Okay. All right. Here it comes. Here comes the drum roll. Okay. Oh, Is it funny. over yet? The drum so, roll's as over. Dan Elliot, it was. It was beautiful. As Dan Elliot said, we were working on it for quite a while. So I kept going back and forth with this list. It must have been at least a dozen times. It was really tough. Like you think it's an easy task to do to make um, to make your top five of you know Tom Hanks films. However, it's not that easy. Um, so yeah, I will start with the Green Mile. Uh, so 99, uh, 1999, beautifully made Frank Darabont uh, film, who's uh, director of the Showtime Redemption, who's in fact. Tom Hanks was meant to uh, actually play at. Uh, he was meant to be our Andy. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. because of the scheduling conflict, it was, um, I can't remember the name of the actor. It, it wasn't Tom Hanks who, who portrayed it. So as essentially as the favor, Tom Hanks decided to take the role of uh, Paul Edgecom Edgecombe. And yeah. yeah, he, it smashed. I know it's Brian's one of the most favorite films. And oh, yeah. It really gets me every time. It's a, it's a sad story. It's a tragic story. However, it's beautifully, beautifully made. And it simply just wouldn't work without Tom Hanks in it. Yeah, and, Mags, yeah. Real, real quick, too. So in order to yeah, play the perfect. title role in Forrest Gump as well, I mean, he had to turn down that, that role for right. you know, of Andy Dufresne uh, for Shawshank Redemption. Yes, Andy Dufresne, so. yes. Yeah, and it's King's most faithful adaptation, so it had to be on the on the list out there. Uh, number four, where is my list of spear? Number oh, four. You're, you're, you're like, just stuck on number Hello. five. I'm like, okay, keep going, sorry. Let's keep going, Philadelphia. <laughs> so I actually rewatched Philadelphia the other day just to kind of see why was I so determined to have Philadelphia on my list beautiful for film. a number of reasons it's the social importance and obviously it's a it's about a lawyer who's diagnosed with AIDS mm -hmm. and it's essentially it's because of Tom Hanks cast in it this film had such a strong power because how can how could they choose you know America's sweetheart to portray such problematic at the time character um, and there was the, my favorite quote that his, um, uh, about his character that, that I found somewhere that it says, it's a time capsule relic slightly diminished, but he fortunate evaluation of human thinking about sexuality and AIDS. And I thought that just really encapsulates what this film is about. Um, yeah, his likability was attacked by the era of homophobia However, I think the film, you know, he, he won an Oscar for it. So uh, the, the, the portrayal kind of spoke for itself. Uh, number yeah. three, Forrest Gump, of course, had to, had to make it. Mm -hmm. uh, what did I have for <laughs> it? It was turned out by Bill Murray, interestingly, and John Travolta, and even Big Chevy mistake. Chase. But Big mistake by Bill. <laughs> oh my goodness, can you imagine <laughs> any of them? It wouldn't, be the, it wouldn't have been the same. 
like Run Forest Run with Bill Murray would be a very different <laughs> kind of movie. <laughs> oh my god. I can't it's imagine tragic. that. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> of course, one of the most quotable movies. Uh, I'm a huge, huge fan of, uh, of course, the uh, Robin Wright, who is obviously, I, I did my thesis on her. Um, I'm obsessed with this actress and uh, mm -hmm. obviously our famous Jen A. Um, Jenna. <laughs> Jenna. Um, yep. And oh yeah, fun fact: it's one out of three films that him and uh, Gary Sinise, who plays Lieutenant Dan, Lieutenant Dan, <laughs> actually yeah. uh, featured it. Lieutenant Dan. Yes, <laughs> they yep. they they were together in the Apollo 13 and the Green Mile. However, they never actually had the scene together up until Forrest comes. That is uh, my number two. Wow. Yeah. No, that is, I, I, you wouldn't yeah. think. But I, it kind of makes sense because they never really shared the screen in any scene or when they were, they were sort of like talking over radio. So I get that, yeah. Like shooting, when you shoot a movie logistically, you don't have to have the actor on set, you don't bring yeah. him on set, right? Anyway, all right, let's get back to the list. Right. Okay. Um, and my number two was a castaway. Yes, that was it. Film 2000 and uh, Castaway was one of the first films I, I saw as a girl and um, it was quite it, it was obviously like the whole transition into understanding that films are films and the way they are made so I was very fascinated by how they filmed everything they did I had tons of questions whether he was actually on the lonely island and how did he survive I really believed in a lot of things that I saw in that film because I was probably too young to watch it. <laughs> However, yeah. uh, tr inter interesting fact, Wilson was named after Tom Hanks' wife, Rita Wilson. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, wow. I actually didn't know that. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it was quite interesting. Of course, he undergo a physical transformation. Uh, it was one of the most intimate performances, I feel, of his career. Um, you know, Tom Hanks tend to portray really lonely characters but that one was probably obviously the loneliest he was cast away as the title says um <laughs> what else i had there uh oh, oh yeah you're... that the during during q a yeah. just one more bit about the castaway that during q a session uh robert zemkis who was the director of the film was asked what was the an, an, op an open package and it was a waterproof, solar-powered satellite telephone. Oh, wow. So, yeah, <laughs> if Interesting. If only opened that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, there wouldn't be a, there wouldn't be a movie, <laughs> then there wouldn't be a film, so, you know. Exactly. Yeah. But he could have. He could have just saved us all the stress and cry and, yeah, anyway. Well, yeah, what was the, what was the name of his dog? That's the that's the, like one of those quotes, right? What's the name of his dog? Wilson. Like, is he's just screaming in the water when he's his his or his imaginary dog? Am I? Yeah, it was. Okay. I can't yeah, it. I don't know, Daniel. I think it was <laughs> guys. Somebody needs to look this up because I feel like this has come up. Um, Castaway. I'm gonna do this. Okay. Castaway Wilson. <laughs> yeah, it was it was his uh, it was his. I think it was like a volleyball that he draws a character on. What happened to Wilson yeah. and Castaway? I found his way <laughs> to the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, apparently. I mean, that's what happened to Wilson. It's hilarious. Oh, wow. It's sort of sad and hilarious, but like that's one of those, he, he, he's got this really <laughs> visceral scene. You can, you can think it's, I mean, yeah. you know, out of context is funny, but when you watch the movie, obviously you're seeing watch this fan's desperation. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that was one of those, like, that's one of the quotes that I remember from that movie. Anyway, Max, you have another one to go. Where, 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 what's your number yes. one? My number one, it had to be the terminal. Um, most importantly, I think because on myself, I'm an uh, immigrant. Well, I'm currently moving to a fifth country. Uh, so it's quite exciting. And also, you know, it touches me deeply because I know what it's like not to know anything that's happening around me, not only because of the language barrier, but also by the cultural difference. The terminal, where do I even start? Uh, it was obviously selected for the opening of the 2004 Venice Film Festival. Nice. There is Stanley Tucci in it, and everything oh, that Stanley that Tucci touches. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm all in there. 
Stanley Tucci does the best Negroni <laughs> ever. So for those of you who don't know, if you haven't seen Stanley Tucci make the Negroni, and I can confirm it actually is the best Negroni you'll ever taste. What <laughs> um, and the story is actually based on the real story of Mehan Nasseri, who is an Iranian refugee in 1988, who couldn't enter UK because his passport was stolen. And he That's was allowed insane. to enter France <laughs> or return to Iran. So he decided to stay at the airport. So it, and then he left the, the, the French airport only in 2006. So that oh is crazy. Yeah. What a story. He, <laughs> stayed, wow. he stayed at the Are airport for like, yeah, 18 years. A tw 18 years? Yeah. Holy That's right. Yeah. How? Yeah. That's insane. It's so, crazy. Oh my god. I didn't I, I knew it was based on a story. I had no idea it was it was that deep. Like it was that, I mean like he was stuck yeah. in the airport for that long. That is Right. Wow. Okay. Two thousand six. But that's I mean, you know this film montage when you get to see how he lives and start I I'm a sucker for these things when people actually manage to find a way to live around unli in unlivable spaces. Same as in Castaway, the sort of like yeah. making the best outcome of the situation. I think it's just very, very well done. And yeah, I actually had no idea until we were researching for the show that it's actually based on the true story. Um, yeah, but these are my top fives. And yeah, once again, Dan, I'm disappointed because I know <laughs> your top one for a very long time. Um, yeah, we'll talk about it. You know what? Hey, let me, let me make... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm going to make it up to you guys, right? I'm going to make it up to you guys right now because, okay, let me just first read out what I wrote down for Mags' top five. I was trying to combine, I was trying to be cute with these lower thirds, right? Stuck at the airport with Jenny, <laughs> heading to Philly. Like, I was trying to match all these, mishmash all these movies together. But I told you guys before the show that we were not going to, um, we were not going to watch any clips from these movies. However... However, I will make an exception for the terminal, especially because I feel really bad that, 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 that you know, I, I seem to have wronged you guys by removing it from my, my top, my top. Why well, actually removed it just from number one to number two? I, I don't really know how bad, it, it could have been much worse. I could have dropped it to number three, to number four, <laughs> to number five, out of the top five. I mean, You're it's, pushing it's, it. It's You're there. pushing it out. Okay, all right, all right, okay, all right, fine, fine. Tell you what, let's watch a clip from the terminal and 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 you know oh, watch Tom goodness. Hanks in all his heartwarming glory playing Victor Novorsky as he's you know hanging out at the JFK airport he's in this clip he's figures out how to use the quarters Excuse me buddy It's Zavorsky. <laughs> What's going on? Out the quarters. <laughs> Good afternoon. Welcome to Burger King. May I take your order? Bye-bye. <laughs> 
Sounds great to me. Take your what? Ah, now I want a Whopper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, man. I, Burger King might have just got my business there. I mean, look at that Whopper. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a freaking ad. That's a freaking like five minute long ad for the movie. Oh yeah, that's, that's what they were that advertising is. for the for Burger King. I should say not for the movie. The movie is the movie, but this, this the, yeah. I mean, this movie is so heartwarming. It's it's it's. Let's let's talk about. Just, the performance in this movie is very understated, for for like Tom Hanks. He's not really playing a character who's getting shot at in this movie. He's not playing a character who's um, going to any, well, you know, compared to, say, Castaway, stuck on an island and he his plane just crashed. He's playing a guy who's stuck at the airport. And and how do you, yeah. how do you, and then obviously, if you don't know, in the movie, if you don't know how long he ends up staying there, it, it certainly isn't like how many years was was the person who this was based on in real life like how long was he stuck at the airport max what, what, how long was that uh, tom hanks <laughs> for one i think it was almost a year right well no i'm talking about like this the, the, the real, real life story. yeah, yeah. actual years. guy 18 years 18 years so i mean in the movie he's not there for 18 years i mean a year still i look as somebody who has been stuck at an airport for like up to three days, I think it was, the Dubai airport, because I used to, I was traveling on a standby ticket, and you don't catch a flight if there's no room, you're, you're stuck. Um, so as somebody who has had to do that for just two to three days, I mean, it's it's not yeah. easy. But at the same time, like I said, you're not getting shot at. You're, you're not putting a prisoner on, on death row and, uh, you know, in the, in the electric chair. You're, you're not, you know, you know, hit, storming the, the Omaha beach in, in Normandy you're certainly you, you know not playing uh, you're playing table tennis at the Olympics or meeting President Kennedy at the White House or or doing any <laughs> number of other fantastic things that Tom Hanks has done in all these other movies you're talking about so by comparison he's playing a much much simpler character with a simpler mm -hmm. role and a simpler character motivation if you will but to be able to bring out something special in that performance, I think, goes to show you just how good of an actor he is. So, was that the only was that the only immigrant role that he yeah. played in a movie? I think so. I mean, so he was technically an immigrant on that island in Castaway. <laughs> they don't have customs or you know, but he was. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, so you're right. He, yeah, he, he reminiscent. He, he so Tom Hanks reminiscent uh, of an early mentor who are like uh, the stage director essentially who sort of told them how to act. And do you know what he told them? That all of the like the greatest plays out there are about loneliness. That's why yeah. I think you can sort of see at the, 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 the work of Tom Hanks, he mainly goes to the kind of really outcast roles that, you know, he, he, he goes for the frailty, but as well as their like, you know, the better quality of these characters, and that's what makes them so, so unique. Um, yeah. You know, he's got a new science YouTube fiction um, post-apocalyptic movie coming out, and it's called Finch. It's directed by right. Miguel Sapuch Sapuchnik, and it's going to have uh, Tom Hanks in it. It's one of the producers in the movie is Robert Zemeckis, who, of course, directed uh, Forrest Gump. It's going to be on <laughs> Apple TV+, Plus, and it's coming out, I think, November 5th on Apple TV Plus. That's another one of those movies where I think he's going to be acting against a robot and a dog most of the time, I think. So, wow. Like you said, <laughs> hey, he still he's he still, you know, lives and dies by the philosophy as an actor and I mean, as an actor, I think that's really truly where you don't have somebody to play off of other than just yourself. There's nowhere to hide. You have to bring your A game. And I, you know, Tom Hanks is, yeah. is somebody who can do that better than almost anybody else. Um, but yeah, I think The Terminal is, is a very underrated movie. And speaking of underrated, we have to, to move on to Brian's top five. And I'll say <laughs> this, Brian. The Terminal should have, oh the, the Terminal sh should be on your list, but but it isn't. But you know what, man? I'm still gonna give you. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you a drum roll anyway because <laughs> I like you. 
So, so here it goes. L oh, you know, let's take a look at Brian's top five. But before we do, we got to <laughs> give him a bit of a drum roll here. Oh, very much appreciated, Daniel. I don't think it would have been the same without the drum roll. But <laughs> no, it, it's it's so much better, right? It's so much better. All right. Well, I'm gonna throw the list up on the screen. It's green yeah. on an island playing with toys on Omaha Beach. Guess what that means? <laughs> this is Brian's top five. So yeah, Tell starting us, out. Yeah, starting out with number five. I mean, this is a movie that Daniel, you and I obviously had together um, on our list. But Saving Private Ryan, I felt like definitely had to make it into the top five. Um, as you'll notice, yeah, Forrest Gump is not on there. You know, one of the American classics, obviously. Again, but why? <laughs> yeah. But, wow. uh, why? Bold, but, bold move. Yeah, very, very bold <laughs> move. Um, but Saving Private Ryan is just one of those movies for me. I mean, Daniel, as you mentioned earlier, um, that last, you know, one of the last scenes there were Tom Hanks, uh, right before he, he dies, I mean, basically whispers into... Matt Damon's here earn this. I mean, just it gives me chills every time I, I hear that. And basically, you know, he's speaking about, you know, the ultimate sacrifice for our country and all the men and women who have, you know, fought for this country and lost their lives for this country, uh, which is which is, you know, just an awesome one of the most iconic, you know, like lines from a movie. Um, this was obviously directed by one of the greatest directors of all time, Steven Spielberg. Um, and I don't know, I just I can't imagine basically what those soldiers were going through during the invasion of Normandy in World War II on Omaha Beach. Um, I mean, just, it's so gory and so graphic, and you get, like, the perfect, like, example of just how crazy and insane and chaotic, like, you know, war can actually be. I think it's one of the, one of the best war movies of all time. From Ever, all the war movies all time. I've seen. Yeah, yeah, from what yeah. I've seen. I mean, I think it's one of the, the greatest of all time, hands down. Um, wow. You sold me that, Brian. <laughs> so number Dan, Dan didn't manage. You got me that. <laughs> I mean, I tr look, uh, the Normandy Beach invasion was was you know obviously a huge moment in history. But the way it's portrayed in this movie, it's I don't think it. Oh gets yeah, better. it's it really just it, yeah. You know? Yep. So number okay. four, I have Catch Me If You Can. Obviously, uh, neither one of you had this mo this movie on your list, and I can understand why. And we're going to talk about this right now. We're going to straighten this out. <laughs> Um, so basically, <laughs> another. I'm gonna another, strain uh, this out. I'm gonna I'm gonna put you guys straight. <laughs> so uh, this is another Steve uh, Steven Spielberg uh, uh, classic movie. Um, basically, it was based on a true story. Um, I just love the way this film was shot, and basically the way you can see how far someone can actually go and get away with such lies and, and major felonies that they commit. You know, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio obviously played a great part in this movie. Um, and it was meant to be J J Johnny Depp originally. Yes. And, yep. and James Gandolfini was that. actually meant to play Tom Hanks' role as right. the, um, Carl Harnarty. Yeah. So the yeah. role that Tom Hanks basically plays in this movie, so he plays, um, it was Carl Hanratty, basically. FB Hanratty, right? Hanratty, yeah. yes. So basically, that was the FBI officer who was chasing uh, Frank Abagnale Jr. Uh, throughout the whole movie. So basically, um, the the guy who Tom Hanks... I know, Mags, you and I have obviously spoke about this for, before. Like, he wasn't actually... Like, the, the character that Tom Hanks uh, actually played was not an actual, like, real, you know, character. But basically... Um, it was it was actually portrayed on uh, a person, an FBI agent, uh, Joe Shea, uh, actually was one of the I believe it was, he was one of the FBI officers, if not the FBI officer who that character was portrayed on. And uh, basically uh, in an interview, um, basically because I think he has since passed away, Joe Shea. But after watching that, he said that Tom Hanks so perfectly played his uh, part, and it was actually like, you know, he was actually him. Like in the movie, like with the accent and everything, the way, the mannerisms, the way he acted, the joke, you know, the big joke that, I can't say it like live on <laughs> on, on air here, but uh, yeah. So, um, so yeah, actually, wow. yeah, so it was really interesting that I found that, but 
Um, yeah. It's funny, too. There's a cameo by the real-life Frank Abagnale Jr. Uh, he actually plays one of the French officers in the movie that arrests uh, Frank on Christmas Eve uh, 1969 yeah. in the movie, which is really <laughs> interesting. So um, there, is, there is another connection you could do to a uh, Forrest Gump. So apparently, you know the, the the scene where Tom Hanks sort of finds Frank in the hotel room, and then um, there is this this moment where you have like feathers sort of flying. No, sorry, there is money bills flying everywhere, and mm-hmm. apparently that's like a homage to to, to Forrest Gump and the feather oh. falling down onto, uh, like in front of the uh, his his feet essentially at his feet. It was quite interesting. I uh, think I found out. Yeah. You know which scene I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's basically what I'm going to say about Catch Me If You Can. But, you know, just a great movie. You know, the fact that it was, you know, based on a true story, I think that's the reason why I just had to put it in there. And the fact mm-hmm. that, you know, Tom Hanks did such a great job playing uh, Joe Shea in that, you know, what I mean, it was kind of like an inspiration to that character. Um, I mean, it just speaks highly of who Tom Hanks is and, you know, just the actor he is just able to portray, you know, whoever it is, you know, that they want, basically want him to portray. So, so, um, dude, how, I, I, by the way, all that said, I don't like the fact that you put a supporting role in the top five I mean, <laughs> of all the movies that he's done. Yeah. But yeah, tell me what's number three, man. Tell me what's number three. Because right, at this so point, number... you're, losing, you're losing the plot. Like, t- <laughs> Saving Private Ryan is number five. Then Catch Me If You Can is number four. I mean, does it get uh... worse at number three? <laughs> like, Come on, dude. you cannot put down Toy Story 3. I love this movie. Okay. Yes, it's an animation. Fair enough. Yes, you know, he did a voiceover, and obviously because it's an animation, but... I just love the fact that Toy Story, the Toy Story franchise was basically the first animated film uh, that helped kick off uh, the company Pixar, uh, which mm-hmm. was started by one of my personal favorite people, Steve Jobs, you know, me being a big fan yeah. of Apple, obviously. But, oh my God, I cry every time I see, especially for Toy Story 3. I mean, all of them are great to me, but I cry every time I see the scene with all the toys, you know, in the furnace before, you know, they're about to meet their doom. And then they're saved by, um, you know, basically like the alien, the little alien characters with the with the claw. Um, but another really iconic scene in Toy Story. Um, and then also when Andy gives Woody away at the end to the little girl Bonnie. I mean, there's I, I tear up every time because Andy has spent like, you know, he grew up with those toys. And now he, it was like he was given a part of himself like to, to the little girl Bonnie. And that's, you know, actually where the the Toy Story saga continues in Toy Story 4 with, you know, their adventures, you know, living with Bonnie. And so, I don't know, just Toy Story, Toy Story 3. I mean, it's cool, too, because Tom Hanks and Tim Allen, they actually insisted that they they record their lines together in the studio. Um, Oh, okay. and and, And it was actually, like, unheard of at that time. Like, nobody had nobody had previously like recorded like their lines really together so they kind of like you know broke ground at that fascinating yeah so i I did not know that i really like did you did you hear also about tom hanks being in an elevator and then some mother telling your kid that that's woody and the kid was like no it's not (laughs) like close close your eyes and then he did the line from the film I think oh. he was so happy. Oh my it's God. Woody. It's Woody. <laughs> I think yeah, I did hear about heart. that somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I think I did hear about that before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, moving on to number two. Uh, you know, Cassaway. hey, can I can I stop you there for a second? Yeah, can yeah. Because, because you, okay, you know how I was like ragging on you for, for Toy Story? Like, is this going to get worse? I know that it was Toy Story 3 was coming up. But I'm like, really, man? Like, but but you used. But the moment you mentioned that whole so long partner, like to me, you know, to me that is a. That is a scene that 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 you know gets me every time. It, it really truly. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, and you, or you give them away to yeah. like. It's like a, it, like a, a part of you is like gone. You know what I mean? Like a piece of you is you, like you gone. Do you guys? Your childhood. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Do you so, guys want to watch? Do you guys want to watch the scene? 
Do you want to watch the scene? Because I'll play it for you. Oh I've shed my a... God, you spoiling us today. Look at I... that. <laughs> You've spoiling... got all those clips. <laughs> <laughs> so, because, look, I've shed You're a tear or two watching us. that scene. <laughs> I know I shed a tear when I watched that scene in, in theaters. Oh, and man. I would love to like take a look at it. Like I'd love to hear. Yeah, it. let's. You know what, Daniel? You know? Let's take a look. Yeah, I'm probably gonna cry, but. <laughs> don't, don't cry the here. I mean, hey, <laughs> you do you, man. But I'm. I'm. Let's let's play the scene. Take good care of these guys. They mean a lot to me. My cowboy. Woody? What's he doing in there? There's a the snake in my boot. What? There's a snake in my boot. <laughs> now, Woody, he's been my pal for as long as I can remember. He's brave, like a cowboy should be, and kind and smart. But the thing that makes Woody special is he'll never give up on you, ever. He'll be there for you, no matter what. You think you can take care of him for me? Okay then. Gets me, gets me every time. I mean, that that's uh, yeah. It's a very especially because if you've been watching like what what's going on in the movie leading up to that that point in the movie, it's it, it gets you every time. I mean, that's one of those iconic scenes and certainly like animated movie history. Which you know, when we get a time, when we get a chance, we, we we should do like a like a top five animated movies of all time because there oh, there's yeah. some debate about that one. Uh, um, that that <laughs> would I would have to be like prepare box of shoes and stuff that would be a real emotional roller coaster i think for all of us yeah we're all the suckers yeah. for a good animated feature so. i definitely got teary there so yeah it was yeah, yeah. oh woody all right okay, brian so we gotta friends. we gotta keep going man like, yeah what's your top yeah what's so, next so next we have number two castaway i know mags you and i had this on our list um and this is definitely Yay. high for me uh, this was actually number one at one point, but I actually had to switch it with Green Mile just because of, uh, just because of the way, like, the Green Mile affects me and the story behind it and everything. And it, I don't know, but Castaway, the biggest thing I took away, uh, and learned from Castaway, and this goes for everybody else as well, too, is that basically life goes on, you know what I mean? And you just have to learn how to adjust to those changes. Basically, when, uh, Tom Hanks comes back from, um, you know, he comes back to the United States, basically, and realizes that Helen Hunt had moved on with her life, and she got remarried and had kids with someone else. Uh, you know, it's it's heartbreaking, but it's just the reality of the situation. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just something where, you know, it's a good good life lesson, I guess, because I could certainly relate. Not Not in the sense where I was on an island stranded like Tom Hanks was, but... I mean, there was, you know, there was a girl in my life who, you know, obviously we, we broke things apart and, you know, I, I wasn't initially able to like move on from it, but, you know, it's definitely mm -hmm. like life lessons you can take away from that movie and learn from. Um, I know a lot of people like to pick on this movie and pick out a lot of flaws about it. And uh, they have speculation basically on the fact that, you know, if this was something that actually happened to someone, the chances of them surviving are really not that good. But Minimum. I just, yeah. I just love seeing what Tom Hanks like had to go through like by himself and like w like the way he did it and the way he kept himself sane, you know, through a, a freaking volleyball, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. it and survived for you know for what was it? How long was he on the island for? I think it was for like years, right? That he yeah. was on the island for. So, but <laughs> yeah, a few years. Yeah. So. Yeah. Excellent, excellent movie. Great message in it, uh, for sure. Um, and it's just, it's that's one of my biggest fears, too, is, like, going down, like, on a plane and just being stuck on a raft 
in the middle of a storm at night in the ocean. I mean, that's like one of like my biggest yeah. fears. But um, yeah, could be worse. You could be on a door with only room for one person. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Too. You know? And yeah. Also, at least FedEx got their you know job application raised by thirty percent, wasn't it? After oh the... yeah. Yep. It didn't put people off on the contract. That is true. People wanted that... to work for the brand because they're like, I'd love to crash in the ocean on a FedEx plane and then land on an island and yeah. hopefully Tom Hanks will be there. That's. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, for, I mean, you know, like not to make light of something like that. I mean, planes don't, you know, planes generally have a pretty good uh, track record, safety track record. But yeah. so it doesn't happen often that something like this would ha would would be the case where a plane crash, you know, cargo plane crash in the ocean. And the person actually survives and then ends up on an island and survives, you know, that whole ordeal. It's kind of like The Martian with Matt Damon. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, we're going to eventually do a top five Matt Damon movies and maybe The Martian makes it there. But yeah, this is one of those Tom Hanks movies that it's, again, underrated. But some people, for some people, it's, it's, it's like one of their favorites, if not their favorite. I know, Brian, you said mm -hmm. it was number one, but yeah, now it's one number point. two. Yeah, you know, but what is number one? Give us the number one movie so, on the list. Yeah, so number one is the Green Mile, and uh, you you better be playing the clip from that movie because <laughs> oh, my I god, really, I really want to see it. But I, so I cry. I'm yeah, as you could already gather from what I've said. I I I get very emotional when I watch certain movies, but I cry every time I see the final scene uh, where John Coffey is executed. It's just so sad. Uh, just goes mm -hmm. to show you that, you know, a lot of innocent people, you know, in the world, um, they're basically uh, accused of something that they're they're innocent of, you know what I mean? And it's, it's a shame, but there are a lot of, like, injustices, you know, in the world today. And basically mm -hmm. just, it, this is a perfect de depiction of that, I believe. And um, it's unfortunate, oh. but... Also, most faithful King's adaptation, I must say, like, I'm a huge fan of Stephen King's books, and that one was... The, the film that I actually had no issues with, with whatsoever. Obviously, they I didn't know that was things, a Stephen King book at that. T was it, I had no idea. Yeah, what. yeah. And according to mm -hmm. one of the featurettes on the on uh, the DVD, uh, Stephen King called this film the single most faithful adaptation of his work. So, which is pretty wow. incredible. Yeah. Um, wow. And just a couple more things, real quick, uh, about this yeah. movie. Um, for emotional scenes, Michael Clark Duncan. Um, would basically rec he would recall his father leaving him as a child i guess that would help him oh like, with God. the emotional scenes which just like ties into like the the whole like emotional yeah. state of the movie um another thing i want to point out too I, I, obviously you guys remember the mouse in the movie you know on the green mile yeah um 15 mice were used in the movie each spent months being trained to do wow. different tricks which is insane so wow uh yeah wow. i thought that was pretty pretty interesting and this did, just tom hanks being the guy that he is uh, i know i mentioned this earlier to you guys um off air but tom hanks treated the entire crew uh to a meal every night on set of this movie so it just goes to show <laughs> you what kind of guy he is yeah tom hanks so. is the man it's man. just tom hanks oh. yeah and bruce I mean, willis was actually not... suggested i was just gonna say bruce willis actually is the one who suggested uh michael clark duncan to, to play that part because he co-starred in uh, Armageddon, I believe. Okay, right, right. Yeah, 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 of course. So, do you guys want to watch right. the clip? We can watch the clip, and then we gotta well, like, go to our well, combined think, top five. Yeah, Max but... is gonna say something. What were you gonna say, Max? <laughs> no, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was sorry. I was just saying that wasn't there a petition for Tom Hanks to become a president or something going on because everyone just needs, like, I, I I'm listening to my like one of the most favorite film podcasts and they keep kept playing this quote from you mean you're Hanks listening to us saying, you're listening to also oh curious right? yes to you yeah, <laughs> okay. Okay. yeah but there's just, one just other film sure. podcast okay. i tend to listen <laughs> yes do you know what they say they like tom hanks said that like if oh i'm gonna mess it up actually now i'm gonna come back to it later if if things <laughs> If things not all right in the end, that means no, I messed it up already. Never mind. Let's hold the clip. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's watch the clip. Let's watch the oh, clip. Good. Here it comes.
how it is every day all over the world. <laughs> On two. I mute, so did I mute myself was, there? Everything I'm... will be all right in the end. If it's not all right, <laughs> it's not the end. Simple yeah. as. <laughs> I was going to say, I started yeah. talking, I muted myself, but but yeah, I mean, that clip, that clip gets, um, I haven't seen the whole movie, but, but I saw enough of it to put that clip into context. And like the, the moment in that scene that gets me the most is like when they go to the insert shot of the hand and he's like grabbing his hand to shake his hand and like just like he hangs around and wraps all his fingers around it's not just like he goes in and like that right there portrays like the mindset that Tom Hanks's character is in and and then just the gravity of the moment so because well, yeah. he knew um, he knew he was God's gift you know and, right yeah so yeah i mean it's 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 another great movie again for me pers you know these top 5s are meant to be like our personal top 5s so for everybody it's you know Thing the movies land in dif differently, but and it didn't make it into my top five. But hey, you know what? It was a wor it's a worthy top five inclusion, and certainly at number one, I think uh, there's a place for it, Brian. So you know, I would agree with you that it's it's a it's a decent choice. So oh, yeah. I bagged on you early, but I gotta say, you know, you finished <laughs> up strong. So <laughs> well, good. good job. So I th yeah yeah. So you know what? Let's move on to our combined top five. And before we do that, I gotta explain to you how we got around to getting this combined top five, right? So we, between the three of us, picked out our own top five. Then we figured out where the overlaps, how many individual movies did we pick out? Ironically, it came down to a very, you know, nice and even number of 10. Between the three top fives that we put together, we have 10 movies total. So then we decided, let's vote for our combined top five. How do we do that? Well, we decided that we will vote just like they do for, uh, they vote for the NBA MVP. And th so we will do, we will rank them from one to 10. And basically we will assign point values to each ranking. So number, if, if you ranked a movie first, it would get 10 points. And then it would, go, the number two would be nine points. And then three would be uh, eight points and then so on and so forth, all the way to 10. If you rank the movie 10th, it would get just one point. So. We, we combined all of our scores, we aggregated them together, and then the movies that finished in the top five um, made the list. So, let's, you know, roll the drums, the, 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 the drum rolls, and then we will play it, we'll, you know, show you our combined top five. And after we do that, we're gonna go do some quick trivia, because, you know, Brian put together some fantastic questions, and he's going to be asking Mags and me and testing our Tom Hanks knowledge. But before we get to the trivia, we got to show you our combined top five. So here it comes. I, I, I like the sound of the drum roll. I have to, I have to say, this drum roll is pretty epic. I'm going to pat myself on the back. I did a pretty good job with this. <laughs> OK, here, here it comes. The combined top five, and Mags and Brian have not seen this before. This is our combined top five. What do you guys think? Number five, Saving Private Ryan. Number four, Forrest Gump. Number three is Castaway. Number two is The Green Mile, and number one is The Terminal. Fun fact, The Green Mile and Castaway tied with the number of points they got. They both got 21 points. Meanwhile, The Terminal won with 23 points, and then, 
I'll give you the score for Saving Private Ryan. Because Forrest Gump had a score somewhere in the middle. I think it was like 19 points. So that was a clear number four. And uh, Saving Private Ryan had, had uh, 17 points. And it tied with Toy Story 3, which also had 17 points. But guess how Saving Private Ryan ended up in our top five and not for, uh, Toy Story 3. <laughs> because I figured the tiebreaker would be whichever movie gets uh, more first place votes gets to be higher in the list. So as I mentioned earlier, the Green Mile and Castaway both had the same amount of points, but the Green Mile made, made it to number one on Brian's list, and it wasn't in any of the other number ones, but it had one first place vote, so it, it ranked higher. Castaway didn't have any first place votes, but just scored really well between the three of us. And then Saving Pride Ryan had my first place vote, which, hey, I didn't rig it. I made, I made my switch between number one and two. Forrest Gump moved to number two and Saving Private Ryan. Sorry, no. The terminal moved to number two and Saving Private Ryan was number one well before you know, I knew how the scoring was going to happen. So I'm not cheating. But Saving Private Ryan had my first place vote to help it into the top five. And unfortunately, Toy Story kind of becomes an honorable mention. So that is our top five, guys. Let me know what you guys think about that. It's Green Tucci, FedEx Plane, Erna Jenna. It's Tommy's Gang. That, that's, I'm getting cheeky with these lower thirds now. No, I think, yeah, I think it's pretty fair, uh, the combined top five that we have. I mean, you both love the Terminal, so for that to be number one, I think that was a very good choice. Um, obviously, this was done on a points ranking system, so, um, yeah, I mean, and number two uh, was uh, Green Mile, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, Green Mile was my number one. Uh, Mags, I believe that was your, what was that, your number five? I would five? be happy to have a co like co-sharing of Terminal and Green Mile. They should be both <laughs> up there because it, yeah. it was on my it was on my list as well. And this film is very, very, very good. And one of the best Tom Hanks' portrayals. So I would be happy to have a space for the Green Mile up yeah. there. <laughs> I mean, you yeah. can't go wrong. It's freaking Tom Hanks, right? Like, it's they're all great movies, but yeah, yeah. yeah. When it comes down to like, ranking them, you gotta put some. You gotta put them in. Num you gotta put them in a rank somewhere. Right. So, yeah. Castaway should be number two. That's that's <laughs> what I mean. Like, that's why Green Mile and Terminal should be number one, but. Castaway, it's got to be number two. Hey, yeah. don't blame me. <laughs> I, they, they were tied. So technically, <laughs> they were tied. Don't blame the algorithm. <laughs> but the, Brian made the Green Mile his first choice. So that, but although if he had made Castaway, yeah. was Castaway your no, two? I th was it your number two? Castaway Brian? was my number two. Yes. So if you had made yeah. it number one, then then it would be, beat out the Green Mile by one point, and therefore by right. default get the second so spot. It's my fault now. Right. <laughs> so you know how complicated things get no. in the scoring, but. Like it's, uh, I'm sorry, but, but it, it's not my fault. I don't. It's not any one of our faults. It's just the way the numbers fell. And I'll be honest with you. When I was doing my uh, rankings for this combined list, some movies ranked differently than they did in my personal top five. Like I think to to Toy Story ranked pretty higher, pretty much, but not pretty high, much higher than it did in my other top five. Like my, if I had to do a top ten, personal Toy Story would have been like seven or eight, and it was like six or five, I think. So my top five for, for, for these rankings were different. So it was like a different, it's just like a mental, you know, psychological thing, if you will. But anyway, mm -hmm. I mean, let's just review one more time. We had the Terminal as number one, the Green Mile as number two, Castaway as number three, Forrest Gump as number four, Saving Private Ryan as number five. That is your combined Tom Hanks <laughs> top five movies. So in general, what that means is that's what we think are the best Tom Hanks movies of all time, the top five at least. I know you can easily make a list of top 25. And ironically enough, most everything we picked out is like from the late 90s, mid 90s to early 2000s. And Tom Hanks has been doing this thing for, you know, doing his thing for like three decades now. So uh, there's been so many movies that have come out in recent years, but it seems like, you know, that was the peak of his prime and a lot of his best work or the work that people remember the most is from from those you know late 90s mid 90s to the early 2000s period so <laughs> to move on to the final segment of the show today let's get on to our uh, trivia Brian has whipped up some fantastic questions for us to cover and the way this is going to work is Brian is going to ask us how well do we know our Hanks and you can follow along comment you give us your answers in the comments below let us know you know if, if the questions were good if there's any other questions that we should tackle next time 
Um, but Brian is basically Ross, Mags is the girls, uh, <laughs> and, and you know, me, Dan, is the guys. So we're just going to do it like friends, and uh, Brian's going to pitch the questions, he's going to give us the options, and then each of us is get a ch gets a chance to answer the question, and we'll see who gets more right <laughs> answers, and then, you know, one of us wins, one of us loses, and, and then we move on. That's as simple as that. He's so. a transponster. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to. <laughs> what? Trans is that a word? It's, I think. Not, it's not even the word. <laughs> no, it's not even a that. word. Yeah, yeah. Ross, yeah, Ross is hilarious from Friends. <laughs> it's funny. Tra anyway, tra Transponser. So, yeah, I, yes. Okay. He's transponser. All right. So, so, wh what's the question? So we got seven <laughs> questions. Question. Seven questions mm -hmm. for you guys. Uh, here's question number one. Uh, Tom Hanks received the Distinguished Public Service Award, the United States Navy's highest civilian honor, on Veterans Day in 1999 for his work in what film? A. Green Mile. B. Saving Private Ryan. C. Apollo 13. Or D. Forrest Gump. You have some really good choices Pretty here because they all connect to the military yeah. somehow. Oh yeah. You're trying to trick us, aren't you? Okay. Yes, I am. But I <laughs> I think it's going to be Saving Private Ryan even if I haven't seen it, but based on what you guys said about the film, my guess is that one. Okay, Daniel, what do you say? Oh, Saving Private Ryan. You both are correct. B, Saving Yay. Private Ryan. Correct Very answer. Good, guys. So, so far. No. <laughs> All right. Question number 2. Tom Hanks is the second actor to win back-to-back -back Best Actor Oscars for his work in what two films? And I'll just tell I you, know this. I'll just tell you the first was Spencer. You said Tracy. you didn't know any of the answers. <laughs> <laughs> I actually know them. I was so, playing my game. Oh my god! <laughs> I was trying to make you feel confident. Oh, she was psyching you out. So the first was. So I removed Tracy. the question. Be I'm sorry. Before we get to this, I removed yeah. the question from consideration because I was like, it's unfair on Mags. But then she's like playing possum <laughs> about these. Uh, whatever. You know <laughs> what? Let's just do it. Give me the question. So <laughs> so Tom Hanks was the second who went back to back. The first was uh, Spencer Tracy for Captain's Courageous in 1937 and Boys Town in 1938. So here are your choices for Tom Hanks: back to back Best o Actor Oscars. Uh, is it A, The Da Vinci Code in 2006, and Charlie... I can tell you without options, but keep going. <laughs> and Charlie Just Wilson's... Just novelty. <laughs> and Charlie Wilson's War in 2007. Is it B, The Green Mile in 1999, and Castaway in 2000? Is it C, Forrest Gump in 1994, and Apollo 13 in 1995? Or is it D, Philadelphia in 1993, and Forrest Gump in 1994? Which one is it? Dan? You're going to have to give me the options one more time. Just quickly run through them because okay. I'm struggling with this. So Da Vinci Code, 2006. Charlie Wilson's War, 2007. Uh -huh. The Green, Green Mile, 1999. Castaway, 2000. Forrest Gump, 1994. Apollo 13, 1995. Or Philadelphia, 1993. And Forrest Gump, 1994. Well, the second one was Cast Away in Philadelphia, tick right? Tick <laughs> what was yeah, the second was, one? Was? The second one was Green Mile and Cast Away. That's yep. the one I'm going to go with. That's my choice. That's my Magdalena? Pick. It's D, Philadelphia, and then the second, like the next year he won it for Forrest Gump. 93, yep. 94. Magdalena is correct. It's D. Yay! Correct Gump. answer. Right, so she's up two to one. All right, let's see. Uh... Question hey, hey! Why, why don't we why don't we ask that question about what's Tom Hanks' favorite ba baseball team? Because because <laughs> I feel like I got screwed out of that last question, so I need to get me a give me. I need a give me. Oh like, man! Please, you, you need to get you need a mulligan or a give me. I, I, I <laughs> yes, right. please. All right, number question number three. Tom Hanks was asked to play the title role in what film, which eventually went to Tom Cruise. And here's a fun fact for you guys. Hanks also auditioned for the role of Joel Goodson in Risky Business, the 1983 hit film, uh, which eventually also went to Tom Cruise. So is it A, Jerry Maguire in 1996, B, The Firm in 1993, C, A Few Good Men, 1992, or D, Rain Man, 1988? 
same. That's a hard Jerry one. Maguire. I'm going Jerry yeah. Maguire. That's that's the one where he slide. That's where Tom Cruise is sliding in his in his. Uh, in his socks on his nah, 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 nah. That's the one I'm gonna go Show with. Yeah. That's 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 risky business. Yeah, but <laughs> wait, really? I was, no, I just felt, that's risky I just felt like doing yeah. uh, Jerry Maguire. Show me the money. Show me the money. Show wait, me g- the give money. me the options again. Me give me the options again. I'm clearly showing so it's, you know. So it's a, how much Jerry I know about Maguire. Tom Hanks. Yeah, yeah, A, Jerry Maguire, B, The Firm, C, A, good, a Few Good Men, or D, Rain Man. Ooh, I'm going to stick with my answer. I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go out swinging if I have to. Mags, are you on board with the same answer? So what was A again? Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire, yeah. I, I, I have no idea, so I'm guessing Jimmy, J, um, Oh my goodness. It's not Jerry Jenny. Maguire. Jimmy Maguire. <laughs> Jenny. 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 Jenny Maguire. I think Jenny. it's A. Jerry Maguire. Well, guess because what? The, you, for some reason, yeah. You both Perfect. are correct. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Uh, yes. All right. So moving on to question four. Uh, Tom Hanks' Oscar acceptance speech for what film led to the plot of the movie In and Out in 1997, which Hanks was not casted for in In and Out. And I'll give you a hint. Hanks thanked a gay teacher in his speech. Is it A, Forrest Gump, 1994, B, Philadelphia, 1993, C, Sleepless in Seattle, 1993, or D, Big, 1988? Give me the question again. Could you repeat the question? To... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So Tom Hanks Oscar acceptance speech for what film led to the plot of the movie In and Out in 1997? So I had Forrest mm-hmm. Gump, Philadelphia, Sleepless in Seattle, or Big. Give me the uh, question. The second half of the question has dates in it. I'm Give me not the sure date. I understand the question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One more time, one more time. We need the question one more time. (laughs) So Tom Hanks' Oscar acceptance speech for what film led to the plot of the movie In and Out, which was in 1997. That's when that movie came out, uh, which Hanks was not casted for. So he wasn't casted for In and Out, but his acceptance speech led to the plot of that film. And here's the hint. Hanks thanked a gay teacher in his speech. So was it Philadelphia? No, give me the, because what are the options? Philadelphia is one of the options. Okay. So it's Forrest Gump, Philadelphia, Sleepless in Seattle, or Big? I'm going for Philadelphia just because of the, he was spanking his, um. Yeah, he thanked a gay, gay teacher. teacher. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Daniel, what do you Okay, say? I'm going to, because because I'm more or less clueless on this, I'm going to go with Philadelphia too. Just a okay. safe answer. You guys are both correct. Correct oh, answer. Yay! You guys are getting more correct than you thought you would. <laughs> so, uh, that, question, I'm question. still behind, right? Like, what's the score at this you're point? Down, yes. Yeah, you're down by one. So. Dang it. You're getting rid questions? of chicken how, duck. <laughs> how many more questions left? I need to make up ground uh, here. There are three total left. Okay. So All question right. number five. Tom Hanks is also a seventh cousin once removed of what famous well-known actor and i'll give you i'll say this too Catherine and john hanks uh were the seven times great grandparents of this actor is it a robert you downey jr young, you mean this guy's younger than hanks uh i don't think That's, so that no would be a clue. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know if he I'm is. I'm grilling you Hold for on. clues, man. You got to yeah. yeah. Right. So we have so we have A Robert Downey Jr., B Nicolas Cage, C Johnny Depp, or D George Clooney. Oh boy, I would I love for it to be it. Nicolas Cage. So Tom Hanks is also a seventh cousin of once removed of what I thi- I think actor. it's George Clooney. I think I've heard about it and something tells me it's George Clooney. However, I could be wrong. I might be very very wrong. I'm guessing. Daniel? Uh, uh, you know, I'm already down, and if I, if, I, if I get this one wrong, I better hope Mags gets it wrong, too. Oh, 
man. I want to say Nick Cage. You know what? I'm just going to have fun with it. Why not? Wouldn't it be awesome if Nick Cage was somehow related to Tom Hanks? That would, that would be, be awesome. Yeah, I'm going to pick Nick Cage. <laughs> okay, so the the answer is actually George Clooney. So yeah! Oh, yes. 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 no. Hanks is right again. So you're okay. saying Tom Hanks is not related to 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 Nick Cage? Wrong answer. No, no. he just looks like him, kind of a little bit, maybe. <laughs> no, he doesn't. I I know that, but that's unfair wow. on you, Dan. Like I think I heard that somewhere. That's why when right, if Brian wouldn't give me the you know the choices, I wouldn't have guessed it. So, yeah. George Clooney, of course. So this is, is a this um, is okay. A, this is another fun fact, too, that I found. He is also a distant cousin of Walt Disney, who he portrayed in Saving Mr. Banks in 2013. Wow. Oh, so, nice. yeah. He's a royalty. He is. Tom Hanks is a royalty. Yeah. So, question right, number well... six. Question... <laughs> Daniel, you got some catching up, man. So, question number six. Tom Hanks is a diehard fan of what Major League Baseball team? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm, is, I'm gonna get back in this I thing. I feel like Daniel's gonna get back in. Yeah. Game, yeah. But, okay, I'm about a, to run the gauntlet here. Let's do a, this. The Cleveland Indians, um, who are soon to be changed to the Cleveland Guardians uh, next season. Uh, B, the Boston Red Sox. C, the New York Yankees. Or D, the Oakland Athletics. I think I'll go for Boston. I don't know. Something tells me he's kind of fan of Boston. He's isn't he from Boston? Probably Tom. Tom I don't Hanks think he is. I know Matt Damon and Ben Affleck and, he, and Chris Tom Hanks Evans are. are from Boston. I think Tom Hanks is originally <laughs> from California. I think he was. I'm gonna. Okay. okay. I'm gonna pick the Cleveland Indians, soon to be the Guardians. Okay. So Daniel was right with that one. Correct he, answer. He is a diehard fan of the Cleveland Indians. Um, so funny enough, uh, Tom how Hanks did you get that? <laughs> Sorry, Brian, but how did you get them? Well, Daniel and I are both like we're sports guys and we follow. I know, but like, and... what's so special about this team? Tell me. Oh, Cleveland, uh, not not a whole lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, did, did they? Uh, when was the last time they won the World Series? I mean, didn't they win? Re- I think was... they did win. Re- did they win recently? I know the Cubs did. They broke the curse, but I can't remember. Okay. But Tom Hanks purchased a stone in front of uh, Jacobs Field, where the Indians actually play. Uh, when it they was last, so, guys, they last won it in 1948. Yeah, so it's been a while. Like, the Boston wow. Braves is the team that beat, not the Boston Red Sox. They beat the Boston Braves in 1948. <laughs> Like, it's been a while. Okay. All right. Sorry, so we you were have saying a, something. Yeah. We have a bonus question. So if Daniel gets this right, he will tie with Magdalena. And we can also do a tiebreaker. This is working out want. just like I planned it. So, just like I planned it. So here's the last bonus question that we have. And good luck to both of you. So Tom Hanks jokingly sent the White House press corpse what kind of of new household appliance with a note that read, quote, keep up the good fight for truth, justice in the American way, especially for the truth part, close quote, in March of 2017. Was it A, a microwave, B, blender, C, toaster oven, or D, an espresso machine? He didn't Boy, I've, know I heard that. about this on the news, but give me the appliances again. So, we have a microwave, a blender, a toaster oven, and an espresso machine. So, Tom Hanks would not send a microwave. I think he's better than that. <laughs> what would, if I were Tom Hanks, if I was a Tom Hanks, what would I send? Coffee machine or what else? Blender or toaster, toaster or oven. oven? Why would he send <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, oh, Daniel! Daniel's really, Daniel's really like focused on this. Yeah, he's like really concentrating hard on this. He knows it. It's either my lips are sealed. Dave, it, this is I the don't clincher. Believe it. This is the clincher. It's either coffee machine or blender. Gosh. You know what? Here's what I want to do, because because this is gonna sound much better. One of us has to give our answer, then you have to say right or wrong, and then the other person will give their answer, especially if it's wrong. You know, so right. that way. Okay. All right. 
I've got my answer. I'm locked in. I'm not. Te- I'm not telling you guys so until you- Max has her answer locked in. I'll go for coffee machine. Daniel, what do you? Blender. What do you want me to do? Say whether it's right or wrong. I'm. I'm gonna go with. No. Okay. You say if it's right or wrong, because I'm going with Blender. It was an espresso machine. <laughs> yeah. Damn it. Oh, come on. Answer. Yeah. I really thought it was a blender. You know, with the whole truth and blending. The, uh, are you why? What? What's? What will wow. be? Why, why is it an espresso no. machine? He's... So, do we have special effects for like confetti and? <laughs> No. Drum roll. I'll take the I drum ran, roll. I, you want to take the drum roll? I ran out of time to get one of those, so I'll just give you the drum roll. <laughs> Here we go. Woo! I get to keep the flat. I get to keep the flat. <laughs> Girls Mags wins. <laughs> poor me. Poor, poor, poor Dan. <laughs> I love that graphic. That's fun. I made a graphic oh. for where I would win, and then it would say, sorry, Max, but I guess we're not using that. So. No. So oh. Sorry, Dan. No. I was right in, the, I was in there, you know. If I, if I had that two, I would have pulled right ahead at the end, but it's whatever. Yeah. Whatever, I'll get it, I'll get you next time, and you're little dog. <laughs> Better luck next time. Yeah, yeah, right. I guess. All right, well, um, that just about does it for us. But uh, before we, you know, finish up, I got to remind you: if you're watching and you're, ch- you know, watching the show, you're listening to us, you know, leave us a comment and down below. Leave us a review on your favorite podcasting app. Like and subscribe on YouTube. We would love to get your feedback. Um, you know, we really, really do want to thank you for watching. This is something new. This is a new show. I know there's so many other options out there for you. We are really, really glad that you are checking us out. Um, it's, you know, three of us once a week. Uh, we really thank you for tuning in. Three and Tom mind. Hanks. Tom Hanks doesn't just Trying end to tell here. Tom. <laughs> the what? Tom Hanks doesn't just end here. No, it We're, does not. What yeah, do we have I mean, the next episode? I'm not trying to wrap this up, but you know what? Let's jump into what's coming up next week. So, Brian, what is coming up next week? Are we doing a? Uh, we're doing categories, right, for Tom Hanks, like best best uh, lead actor. Yeah, uh, we're doing the Tom Hanks Oscars. Actor. Yeah, Tom, we're, Tom we're Tom doing Hanks the Tom Oscars. Hanks Oscars. We're going back to the well, Jenny. We're, 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 <laughs> we're gonna, Jen, Jenny's probably going to be in a few categories. Actually, uh, we're going to do something like best love interest. We're going to talk about like best sound design in a movie with tom hanks there's you know best 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 i'm insisting on that one (laughs) okay best yeah let me let me write it down okay yeah (laughs) take notes brian take notes do you i've 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 got a notepad you want okay oh man we're gonna have like the best sidekick we're gonna have like the best face best cameo best cameo um, we could probably do like a best director. I would love to do best, a best director. Best serious role. Best comedic role. Best quote. Yeah, yeah there's a yep. lot. Best, best running form. Um, <laughs> <laughs> best run. <laughs> right, right. I'm trying to come up with some more here. Um, best outfit. Best, best, best outfit. Best, best eating scene. Best eating scene. And yeah. The Whopper. I'm probably gonna get one. You know, after we finish doing this. <laughs> so we have a whole slew of categories. Oh yeah, I think we have got I, a lot to I, talk about. Yeah. I just want to throw a little side note there for people who are probably watching us. Like, I do apologize for me constantly changing my position. That's something that's going to be solved in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. I essentially don't have furniture in my place because I sold everything because I'm moving to another country. It's a long story. So I do apologize for all of you out there who found it annoying. It's all going to improve in a couple of weeks. Just bear in mind with us. Just, yeah. Yeah, I just had to throw out there. But yeah, thank you for watching, guys. And hey, I'm getting professional equipment yeah. pretty soon. Yay! Yay! Yeah, it's on the <laughs> way. It's all good news for us. Yay. It's on the way. It's going to be there in a couple of days. And, you know, Yay. like then we won't have have what you got going on right now. Like, I can't see anything below your chin. It's completely dark. 
<laughs> but but yeah, next week is the Tom Hanks Oscars. I hope you enjoyed, you know, the the top five Tom Hanks movies of all time. We did our favorites. We did a combined. Of course, everybody has their own opinions. I'm sure you guys have, you know, different set of top top five Tom Hanks movies. And if you do. Drop down in the comments below. Let us know your thoughts. Like and subscribe if you're listening to us as a podcast. Leave us a five star review. Let us know how good we are doing. You know, if you're do not doing so hot, then you know, let us know that too. We would love to, you know, get your comments and love to get your feedback going. Uh, let's get a good feedback loop going here. Um, but yeah, it's been a great show, Brian, Mags. Thanks for joining me. It's it's been fantastic. We we talked so many different things. And if there isn't anything else for us to talk about, I, I guess you know it's time for us to go. Like, what do you guys say? <laughs> yeah, I say adios for now. Adios yeah. for, and on that note, as Jeremy Clarkson would say, it's time to end the show, and we will see you next week with the Tom Hanks Oscars. <laughs>